Right, what is going on people? Now welcome to this video. Now we're going to get involved in a new series and this is the Strong in Lockdown series. I've wanted to do something like this for a long time where it is four key elements of training and especially during this lockdown there is no better time to start this. I thought what better way, what better opportunity to try and teach you about the fundamentals of training when you probably have limited equipment, limited motivation and really need some help more than ever. So first of all, welcome to episode one. Episode one is gonna be on training and everything that I think that you should really be considering when you are training at home this lockdown. So the first key thing that I think that you can manipulate at home especially is tempo. So tempo is essentially exaggerating the mechanical tension that your muscles are on when it comes to doing any sort of movement, any sort of lift. So if you think about it, and think about it as simple and as literally as this, right? If you can increase the amount of seconds that your muscle is under fatigue, then it is likely to cause more stress, cause more stimulus to the muscle and potentially grow or maintain your muscle mass. So one of the examples, and I'll give you here, is a Bulgarian split squat. Now, one, an absolutely horrendous exercise, something that I absolutely love in all of my leg day and lower body sessions, Quite a lot of people complain about these regularly with weights, okay? But perhaps you're sitting there with like 10 kilogram dumbbells, maybe even seven and a half kilogram dumbbells, or maybe even a band. So what can you do to try and enhance this and to increase the mechanical tension to make those 10 kilogram dumbbells feel like 20s, 25s, 30 kilogram dumbbells? Well, decreasing the negative and slowing the tempo down. And this is something that we use fundamentally in a lot of the skull trainer programs where you are exaggerating the negative phase. So that would be the downward phase of the rep for three seconds, one, two, three on the way down, potentially even pausing at the bottom for one, two seconds, and then pressing up, but not pressing up as aggressively as you might do when you're shifting something that is like 80 to 100% of your max potentially slowly driving up in a three second phase. So there is a much elongated flow of each rep and it will cause almost six to eight seconds of mechanical tension on the set muscle group that you are trying to train. Now, if you try this with Bulgarian split squats, you try it with push-ups, try and do a 15 second push-up instead of a two second push-up the next time you try it. And I guarantee your chest will be blown up, your triceps will be blown up, and you will feel the movement and probably understand that muscle-mind connection a hell of a lot better than what you have done in the past. So that is the first training principle that you can exaggerate at all. So another factor or another aspect of training which you can try and manipulate is concentrics or isometrics, okay? All of the coaches, we've got six coaches in the school and every one of them calls them a different thing, but essentially holds, okay? So obviously if you wanna try and hold a presser or hold a wall sit for a squat, or you might have even seen if you are into watching a lot of fitness people do these sort of squat holds with a towel, okay? Now, essentially what this is, is holding a position in a, in a hard range of motion for a set period of time before continuing the reps. So for example, we'll go for push-up as again, okay? If you are holding and hovering above the floor, you are increasing again the tension that your muscles are having to contract before then performing a rep. So we're probably gonna show you this in a clip that is probably going over my voice right now, but you will be holding a push-up at the bottom of the rep, not at a dead stop where you're fully relaxed. Your muscles will still be under tension before carrying on. And this is something you might have done before Dr when you were training normally in pause back squats. So if you've done back squats before, you will see quite a lot of strength coaches program pause back squats because what it does is it takes the momentum out of the movement, makes the movement so much harder. It feels like you're lifting heavier, but you're still really using the, the same load and you can still perform and enhance and improve your reps and your progressive overload essentially. So the third thing is sort of an item or a bit of equipment and it is bands. If you have any form of bands at home and quite a lot of the time in sculpt, when we get new clients that potentially don't understand muscle mind connection, they don't understand how to fully contract a muscle group or they need support. 
So take a lap prolonged, for example. Quite a lot of machines in the gym will have a drop-off point or they will have like a strength curve. In certain portions of the machines, you'll not really feel that much tension. So sometimes when new clients come in, in the German sculpt, we'll use bands to help them perform a lap pull down or a lap pullover to try and understand how to keep tension on their lats and rhomboids and so on and so on. This could be the same with, for example, a tricep rope extension or any sort of movement where you can incorporate a band to make something heavier. Okay, so if you're sitting there and you potentially have a 10 kilogram dumbbell and you're sitting there looking and thinking, I want to do single arm rows, single arm dumbbell rows, but I have a 10 kilogram dumbbell. I normally do 35s plus. If you can incorporate this movement and still have the same movement pattern, so you're still single arm rowing with exactly the same form at home, but potentially you can wrap a band around the dumbbell and wrap a band around either a bench, a seat, even your foot, you can try and create the same imaginary load as what you would do at the gym is what you can do at home in lockdown. So bands are something, if you've got them at your disposal, don't like, yes, it's not as motivating. I don't get psyched up to lift a band, but we're in a bit of a crisis right now and you probably don't have much to play with. So if you can use a band at your advantage, this could be a really good way of re, finding the foundations and finding your muscle mind connection and engaging the correct muscles on the correct exercises, okay? Do not underestimate the band. So when it comes to training, when it comes to getting in shape, when it comes to getting stronger, anything, right? And when it's not just in lockdown, this is one that really drives me crazy with clients all of the time. It is intensity and bringing the right intensity to every session, every set, every rep, if you can produce intensity with any, any sort of bodyweight movement, any sort of whatever, whatever the movement is, it does not matter, okay? If you can bring intensity and reach true failure, you are constantly progressively overloading your body in any way, shape or form, no matter which way you look at it, no matter what movement it is, any exercise, if you take a squat, whether it be bodyweight to the grave or whether it be a 100 kilogram back squat or 140 kilogram back squat, you are still gonna in some way hit a new stimulus if you are going to true failure. And it is one of the most underrated things in the world. People go in and they do two hour gym sessions, two and a half hour gym sessions, but they're not really hitting that true intensity, okay? So if you can take sets and find real intensity at home, even if it's body weight set push-ups, you are gonna progress and you're gonna progress in some way, shape or form. Do not underestimate the simple fact of hard work and just pushing to that very true failure. So that is pretty much episode one. That is the four things that I think, especially getting strong in lockdown, you can manipulate to your advantage. So go back through, try and incorporate some of those points, maybe one, maybe all four, in your next training session. Yes, training at home is not quite as motivating as the gym, but if you really try and push some of them four training principles or ideas, I think you can still make progress at home. So thank you for watching. If you enjoyed that episode, give it a like, subscribe, to me i would really appreciate it and in the next episode we're going to cover episode two on nutrition that's all for now over and out